Hello everybody and welcome back to the Mega Modded Gungeon series. We are here once again and today I don't have a lot of time to record, I'll be honest, I'm recording pretty late. So I decided, what better than a shade episode? But yes, we do have two pretty major changes to our mod list. Um, mainly the Enter the Beyond, um, the one that has the new floor and the spin down dice has had a pretty big update. Um, I can maybe briefly go through the changes here if I still have them. One moment. Let me see if I can get them for you. And then we also have um, some changes to a new beta version of somebody's um, planet side. So I'm excited for that as well. So let's have a little, little look at the change log here. Um, either lost a new character that starts with a customizable wand um, and the first custom character to not need custom character mod. So we'll definitely try that out in the next episode. That's going to be something. Uh, and some different different interesting stuff like spin down dice having previews and um, things like that. So I'm really uh, I'm really excited to try that character out. Like I said, I'm on a shorter time limit today. I don't normally have time limits when I record, but I have left this way too late. This video goes out in precisely 45 minutes, so it has to be under 45 minutes. Otherwise, it doesn't go out on time <laughs> because I have left it too late. But anyways, yeah. Let me carry on. Wait a minute. Also something I need to check. Oh. I need to go back to the breach anyways, because I still have theater mode on. Which is this character's kind of an interesting uh concept, definitely. I can I can kind of see how that'd be uh maybe quite useful. But while we're doing this, while it's loading, let me just check something, because oh, okay, my mic seemed really quiet, but apparently it's fine. Right. Carry on with shade. I've already managed to waste precious, precious minutes. Two precious minutes in accidentally going into the breach and not turning off the air mode. Thank you. Right, let's go do a normal run. See if we find any new stuff. I don't know how much we have within the new somebody, um, the new somebody sort of beta that I've been given. It's a, it's a private release. It's like I, I'm sort of working as an internal tester at the moment, so I'm intrigued to see what's involved in that. I haven't really remembered what's bit what's in it i think he, he did tell me um or at least somewhat but i have since forgotten because uh, that was a few days ago now but anyways let's just play it and if there's anything that somebody would like to point out um to people he can always do it in the comments below um so please do check out the comments because there may be a comment for him bloodied key ring of chess friendship's pretty nice we've also got the jam alert here Hmm, we've got some saucy stuff. Potentially saucy stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure this character gets a shop discount as well, doesn't it? So we might be able to grab a few of those keys after this floor is uh, all said and done. So we'll see what our chest contains here. But it's nice to be back in Gungeon. I haven't, uh, I have to admit, I haven't played Gungeon in a little while here. God damn, you could not have given me a worse item. Provides chain masteries even to those that get hit while in the boss chamber. Thanks. Not only are Master Chambers virtually useless because they give us a tiny damage upgrade, but that's it. But also, we can't get hit in boss rooms because if we get hit, we die. So, that is um, slightly annoying, but hey her, It's going to happen from time to time, isn't it? I mean, it, it, it can happen with non-modded items as well. There's a good few out there that uh, a character such as, this, such as this would not benefit from at all. So... It's not like the game's completely screwed me. It is just doing what it do. So we'll, 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 give, it, we'll, give, it, we'll give it a go. But yeah, I, I've actually um, got a few little tidbits to talk about. Um, a sort, sort of a few things I had on my mind. I've been saying this recently in my Isaac videos, and I'm kind of transferring it over to Gungeon a little bit as well. But recently, my sort of commentary in terms of like talking about stuff outside of the game or outside of modding, they usually sort of the big in-game topics I talk about, but when I'm talking about stuff outside of game, I just kind of, like, speak about what's on my mind, like, that day. Oh, you! That was unfortunate. I don't know if you saw what happened there, but that explosive barrel pushed the shotgunner a little closer to me than I was anticipating. I did have the time to turn around and go back, but I decided to continue forward. It was clearly a very big mistake. Anyhow, enough of that. But one of the things is just, like, whatever's, like, been on my mind that day, and sort of two things that jump out to me. For one, I am very shortly, you should be seeing the, the first episode within a week, I hope, um, starting a podcast up with BD1P, 
um, where for one we're just going to be generally chatting about games and Binding of Isaac and roguelites and indie games in general. It's called Inside Indie. We're going to be making um, a new YouTube channel for it and starting that up pretty shortly. We've already recorded two episodes. The first one is just me and him as sort of an episode zero introduction to the series sort of thing. But, 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 episode two, episode two, already recorded by the way, is, ooh, it's, it's pretty chef's kiss. We had on Kilburn, the developer for the Binding of Isaac Repentance, and Alexa. It was very nice to be able to speak to Alexa. Unfortunately, we were a bit rushed in recording, so I didn't get to speak to Alexa too much outside of the actual um, outside of the actual call itself. And I think he just finished like a four-hour stream, so um, it wasn't like it wasn't like the the most sort of lively sort of thing. But I think it still went really well. I think we think we still had a pretty a pretty good conversation. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna say Kilburn was 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 quite lively himself, so that was great, and that's kind of like <laughs> the um, one of the one of the big things we were looking for, because we were kind of basically the idea was that me, BD1P, and Alexa would collectively well, streak lost. Is this like an accuracy um, gun? Uh, let me let me find out. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, yeah, we kind of had the idea that me, BD1P, and Alexa would kind of interview Kilburn, where we'd all kind of ask questions throughout the call. Um, and yeah, I'm going to say it was unfortunate that it was, it was a... Basically, we all had kind of tight schedules, and it was kind of difficult to find a time where we could all make it. So we decided on a date, and we just went for it within sort of an, like a two-hour span, three-hour span that we all had. Um, so like I said, unfortunately... Um, we had to cut it a little bit shorter than I was hoping. We, 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 we did end up going for about an hour 40, though, so it's pretty good. Um, it would have been nice to sort of chat with Alexa a little bit beforehand and after, but it was pretty, yeah, pretty much do the call and get gone. But he's a busy dude, but it was awesome to get to speak to him. I really... Who kicked me then? Um... Streak lost. The book. I died? What, what? What? That does damage, apparently. Okay, we found that out today. Anyways, um, yeah, so it was, it was super cool to get to chat to him, hoping to um, to do some more stuff with Alexa in the future. Um, he seems up for it. Uh, we, we, we maybe plan for me, him, uh, Kilburn, and BD1P to jump in a Four Souls Finding of Isaac game and do a bit of that, which would be really, really fun. Um, mainly because I love Four Souls, but also... Having a Binding of Isaac developer and someone that I have actively watched play Four Souls before playing would be really fun. And also, do you know what? It's actually like, it's like everything about it's great. I love Four Souls and I really enjoy playing it. Having Killburn would be really fun because like play, to play a game, a Binding of Isaac game with a developer is really cool. Um, getting to play with Alexa would be awesome because like I said, I've watched him play it before. And getting to play with BD1P because he's never played it before. Getting to play with a new person is always a treat. Someone that's not played it before. It's always um, a little bit slower to start, but I think it's I think it adds to the fun actually, playing with new people. Not because I can beat them easily, <laughs> although that is part of it. Um, no, no, it's just always fun introducing Four Souls to people. In fact, I um, I don't know how many of you have physical copies of Four Souls or have even played it, but I I have a physical copy. I bought a physical copy when it came out on Kickstarter. Um, I've actually ordered the expansion for it as well, so I'll be getting that whenever it arrives. I, I was. For a long time, I was very tempted to do uh, an in-person Four Souls live stream with like a few friends. We never really ended up making it happen. That was quite a long time ago now. I mean, so long ago that like I had like 300 subs when it was going to happen. My God, this is a very tricky situation to be in. That was a clutch blank right there. Um, but yeah, uh, my God, I'm stressed out my mind right now. Ooh, wooden beam's an interesting one here. Uh, and yeah, I actually ended up playing it with my uh, with my parents and my sister. It was very fun. They actually really liked it, <laughs> surprisingly so. And we kind of talked about that a little bit on the podcast. I mean, obviously, um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on the podcast because hopefully people will go and watch it and enjoy it. But we kind of, we covered a lot of topics. We talked about, like, uh, some of the development process and some of the decisions that were made in, in the patches and stuff. We kind of asked Kill what he thought about some of the community's harsher reactions and like how he feels about everyone blaming Edmund for everything even though it's him making it all. Um, 
Um, we, we spoke a little bit about modding, although Kilburn hasn't looked into modding too much himself, so we didn't delve too deeply into that. We talked a bit about fossils. Um, yeah, we kind of covered a lot of different stuff. It was really, really nice. I was, uh, I was pleasantly surprised by how well it went. And it's not to say that I expected it to go poorly, but um, I'd only spoken to Kilburn once. I'd not spoken to Alexa before. That's oh, great. Um, I'd not spoken to Alexa before either, so it was it was kind of a, and also we, we, me and um, Lady One P are just generally kind of new to um, Pixel Gun. Why not? We'll go send you for it. Nice. Um, we were both generally pillars of salt, kind of new to podcasting in general. I mean, I've done podcasting before with Never Named, but it's a little different when you're not having when it's just me and uh, Never Named. Uh, I don't know who the salt gun is by, by the way. Let me go and check. Um, when it's just me and Nevernam, because obviously we're already good friends, so we just kind of... Um, salt gun. Okay, so one, one's more into the breach. Let's go check that out. One's more into the breach. Um, yeah, the conversation can obviously flow a little easier, because we already know each other fairly well. Whereas when it's new people... Um, it can be difficult to sort of get it going and start things out. And I think we, I think it started off a little like that. Um, people were a little antsy to talk or to jump in to start with. And it ended up being me and BD1P kind of setting the turn and her, like as hosts kind of going into it. But I think later on, everyone kind of got involved a little more and it ended up being really good. Like I said, it's kind of a learning experience. We're kind of hoping to do more with it. But anyways, let's actually try and find Salt Gun. Okay, um, I don't think the synergy's listed, although that might just be because I've done it. Might just be because I opened the wrong thing. Uh, Laps synergies. Salt. Okay. Salt. Okay, it seems the synergy is not listed, fortunately. Um, maybe, maybe if I do wooden beam? Yeah, there's only one listing of wood beam, so I have absolutely no idea what the synergy does. Uh, you watch, it'll be something where I fire it and I'm, it's immediately obvious. Um, it looks like the salt gun has more range. That's potentially it. I don't know if that's, that is actually it. But it, it feels like the salt... Because I swear the salt gun normally doesn't have much range. So, like, if we... Let's just take all these guys out. If we just drop um, this... And then fire the salt gun. Yeah, okay. It's just a it's just a pretty big range increase, which is good because the salt gun's main downside is its range, and this is giving it um, a lot more range. That's nice. I don't know how good this is going to be for bosses. I, I I never wooden beams one of those weapons that I'm never really that sure about. But honestly, this is this within limited range, and I believe that's piercing too. I don't think it normally has piercing either. It's pretty awesome. It might already have piercing, but I feel like it doesn't. I feel like I'd be really strong if it did. But right now, this is really strong, and I'm very much liking it. This is a very good weapon for a character that can only get hit once. And as you can see as well, it's reasonably ammo efficient too, which I always like. So we'll grab that, grab that, and then let's just let's just head on down. I'm pretty happy with our current lot in life here. And there, like this is one of those episodes where I'm like, I'm 13 minutes in already. What the hell? Um, there was, there was a few other things that I was sort of wanting to talk about. One of them is I've just recently today bought a game called Rogue Tower, which is a roguelike tower defense game, which honestly is just so up my street. It's incredible. I might make some content on it if it gets a little bit more updated. Right now it's a, it's in a decent spot. I've, I'd say that like the, the, the UI and menuing leaves a little bit to be, to be desired, but otherwise it seems to be in a pretty decent and stable position. Gameplay seems pretty fun. Um, I've had a few frustrating moments, but I think that's just because I'm early in the uh, in the unlock stage. I'm not really that far down the uh, unlock tree yet. Because uh, it does have like a meta progression thing where you can earn XP through, through runs and uh, take that XP and buy stuff to help future runs. It seems really, really good. And yeah, like I said, I might make some content on it. It depends. We'll see how it goes and how much I end up playing it over these next few days. But I've also been playing Dying Light 2 as well. It's another game that I've been uh, playing a little bit of recently. Obviously, it came out just the other day. I think it came out the 4th and it's the 7th when I'm recording this today. Um, so I, I, I tried that out. I kind of got it on a whim because I, I quite liked Dying Light 1, but obviously games as of late have been trash. Um, and I, I don't mean that like 
sort of generally, but I mean like AAA games have been kind of trash recently, so I kind of was a bit apprehensive, but the reviews came through, they were pretty good. My friend that I was planning on playing it with, he bought it a little earlier and said it was really good, so I played through the first game on co-op with him, um, and so I decided to get it. Unfortunately, it's in America, so it makes time zoning a little more awkward, but we, um, we've been playing it and having an absolute blast. It's a really fun game. I'm really enjoying it. Hello, hello, hello. Now, I don't know what this does, but I want it. Um, gives a flat damage up by two. Ooh, this could be really, really good with our current setup. Also, Singularity. Oh, hell yeah. Um, this could be really good with our current setup with the salt um, thingy, because I imagine it does very low damage, or reasonably lo low damage per pellet, and now it's getting plus two to every pellet, I believe. I may be incorrect in saying that, but I believe that's how it's working. And I believe the damage that we just dealt to said enemies kind of proves that assessment to be true. As you can see, we just need a bit, bit more ammo for this thing, and it's kind of golden. Ooh, what the hell is this? The protein. Is that protein? Um, once more into the breach. The loose bound malt merts. Merts? Is that merts? I don't know. Uh, of this gun flow in existence through a tear in the curtain eons before the great bullet struck. Hmm. Intriguing. I love the animation on this thing. What in the hell is going on here? Now, I don't know how strong this thing is, but it's pretty wacky. Right, let's make sure we have uh, the salt gun as our secondary. But I do want to give this thing a try. It, it, like, if it can hit, it's pretty fucking strong. But it seems like it's pretty hard to hit. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll leave that in the wayside for now. It's probably not a gun we want to be using as this character. But that is a very cool gun. I'm a bit confused by the projectile. It looks a bit dodgy, but... I think it's meant to look like that because of the the nature of the weapon, so I don't really mind it. I think it actually kind of fits quite well. I just want some ammo, baby. Just want some ammo, baby. Thank you. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. Um, I think we should go and um and buy a buy a key so we can get in here if we can. Unfortunately, we cannot. Right. Let's do the boss. I think Salt Gun is just the way to go. Uh, obviously, we have Singularity to make this a little easier on ourselves, should we need it. This is what we can do here. I love Singularity. If you have explosive weapons, it's a little trash, but situations like this, I quite like it. And as you can see, we are trashing her. I mean, even the singularity itself was doing a good amount there. There you go. Absolutely bopped. And then we got Identity Crisis here. Never remember what this does. Gave us a doggy. I think it gave us a doggy and a crossbow, yeah. It gives us the stuff of another character. Cool. Right. We are good to go. Where am I salt gun at? This is a strange one. A bit of a strange one. But I gotta say, I'm into it. I'm into it. Shade runs are always fun. I I, I think, like, inherently as, as just someone that, that knows the game quite well and, like, has gotten pretty good at it, it's really nice to have a character that, that you can kind of... You have an excuse to start trying again, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Thanks, Stork. I kind of needed that. Yeah, you have an excuse to, to start, like, really... Because, like, in my in my normal runs on my normal videos, like, I, it's not, I'm not saying I don't try, but, like, I don't try to not get hit. I just... It's just kind of inherent now. It's just kind of built into the way I play the game. I don't have to really focus on making sure I don't get hit anymore. Uh, whereas with this character, I really do. I have to be very deliberate about my actions. And actually, like, use cover effectively and stuff. And kind of be aware of where enemies are. All that sort of good jazz. We do have a shrine here. Apparently a shrine did get changed or updated. Ooh. Oh, you. This is one of my favorite shrines. 
Just let me sacrifice all my money or something. God damn it. God damn it. That is a shame. Got a gun muncher here. I think a gun muncher could be good. This gun we're not really using right now, even though it's very cool. Um, you munch on that unstable rift, and the crossbow really means nothing to us whatsoever, so I'll give you that. Hey, thanks. Good old Phoenix. Thank you. Okay, double, double shotgunners is a bit much. I do think they need to be, the, the, the dual wielding boys need to be turned down a little bit. I've mentioned it before, but I like to reiterate just in case. I really think the salt gun with this plus two damage thing is killing it. I don't really know if the plus two damage is the thing that's really making it as good as it is, but nonetheless, I'm very much liking it. The synergy's probably the thing that's making it. Spicy time. Give me the spice to free my soul. I want to get lost in the rock and roll. And drift away, EA, EA. Big boy. Did we have ammo in here? I'm just going to check. We don't. Okay. So yeah, spice. Everyone loves a bit of spice. We might be able to do something nice with this spice. I'm really hoping we can get some ammo here. You see, too many dual wielders. This is absurd. It's just a room full of dual wielders. <laughs> there it is. We're good. We are in the clear. I know I have flight, by the way, but it's just kind of habit to, like, skip over stuff like that. The Psy scale. It's definitely a sun bunny. Oh, no, it's not. It's a children of caliber. Um, summons herming bolts of psychic energy to attack the nearest enemy in range. The energy will fizzle if there isn't a valid target. Oh, uh, wasn't this one... Yeah, wasn't this one that has, like, problems if you're playing controller? I'm fairly sure this is one of the ones where, if you're playing controller, it doesn't work as intended, so... Let's put that in the uh, in the back pocket for now. But more dual wielders. Oh, okay. oh god! He's firing multiple times. I wasn't ready. A chest for free. Do you know what spice is? That's not what I meant to do. Um. I'm sorry, doggy. I'm sorry, doggy. <laughs> Not what I meant to do at all. But yeah, bullet time plus spice. Pretty good haul. Do you know what? Cyclone boots. Oh, I can eat my dog. Plus more spice. You've got to love it. We could get a jammed boss here, but at the same time, do I give a damn? Um, I think we just... Go with our Elder Magnum as our uh, as our other weapon, you know. Yeah, the Magnum's pretty good. Like it is, it just literally does have the Magnum stats here. Is that a champion flame or that? It's slightly yellow. It's kind of funny. This is always the attack that gets me. I won't say always, but it's one of them. Ooh, he is in a terrible spot right now. I got that singularity timing just right there, I think. Yeah, I did. There you go. That was good. That singularity timing worked out real well for us there, because we'd have been in trouble if I'd have done that any other way. 
Right, salt gun, good. More spice. Lego. God, this run's pretty beautiful. I'm liking it. I'm loving it. And I do want some more of it. It's bound to be over anytime soon, but basically the next piece of spice I take is where the run ends. It's my assessment. The evil beanbags are after me. Yeah, if I take one more spice, I get Lord of the Jammed on me. I think that's going to create all sorts of issues. Does not mean in any way, shape or form that I'm not going to do it though. Because I definitely am. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's where we end the video then. <laughs> uh, that's a bit unfortunate. That guy just kind of walked right into me. I wasn't... I have to admit, I really wasn't expecting him to do that, but... Hey, her. There you go. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Bit of a short and weird episode, but nonetheless, I enjoyed it. And I will see you guys in the next one.